Team World, today I'm going to show you how to connect your local Apertis client to the real-time index of Apertis data that is being captured by Bitfossil.com. Bitfossil.com has opened up their master index, uh, the root index, uh, using uh, BitTorrent, BitTorrent Sync. Uh, so basically they've, uh, they've offered a read-only subscription uh, to that uh, data as it's coming in. So today I'm going to show you how to hook up that read-only uh, subscription uh, directly to your local Apertis client so you can browse uh, the uh, blockchain data as it's coming in without actually having to hook Apertis up to any kind of blockchain yourself. Uh, there is a, I do want to put out a, a, a very large disclaimer uh, and that is that uh, currently we do not know of any uh, illegal content that has been put on to blockchains using Apertis IO. Uh, legal content could be anything from uh, a collection of, uh, you know, leaked uh, password uh, email combinations, uh, password passwords basically, credit card information, uh, child pornography, uh, anything that you can imagine that you wouldn't want to persist on a blockchain. We haven't seen any of that yet. Uh, however, we are real time monitoring. And uh, so if something, uh, something like that were to come through uh, and, you, and you have subscribed to this particular uh, feed, it's gonna, come on to your, uh, it's gonna come on to your workstation. Now, uh, we, we kind of expect that at some point there is gonna be some sort of uh, negative information on there that we wouldn't want. Uh, so BitFossil has created a report abuse function uh, that can be that'll that that will uh, show up uh, next to every uh, etching, but also on the main page uh, there is a report abuse button there as well. So <clears throat> if you do find content that you think uh, is questionable, uh, you would want to go out to Bitfossil the report abuse link and basically report it by selecting the category uh, that uh, you you feel that it might uh, fall under. Uh, you can see we have a couple different things inappropriate content, abuse, harassment, uh, privacy, someone's using your image without your permission, trademark infringement, copyright infringement, security concerns, and any content forbidden by law or state. So basically you would check uh, one of these uh, and then paste the, con the transaction ID uh, into this box and answer uh, a CAPTCHA. And in that manner, uh, we're proving that you're human so we don't get uh, overloaded with spam uh, with this process. And then that tra those transaction IDs will be uh, sent to Bitfossil for us to review. Uh, they will also be sent to anyone that has uh, selected uh, to be a part of this feed uh, because those reports will actually be synced to your uh, Apertis local client as well. And they'll show up as text files uh, with transaction IDs inside of them. Uh, once we, if we were, if we are, if we do find a transaction ID that appears to have uh, negative information in it, once we remove it from Bitfossil, it will, uh, it will, it will actually delete off of your read-only copy as well. Uh, that's kind of one of the cool features of the BitTorrent Sync now, uh, now called uh, Resilio Sync. So, with that uh, said, I am now going to show you how to create that uh, real-time link. And I'm actually going to just install Apertis. I'm going to do everything from scratch. Uh, so if you watch this video uh, you, uh, and follow these steps, uh, you can be up and running uh, and searching through that uh, the blockchain data that we have found so far. All right, so first of all, we want to install Apertis. So we'll go out to apertis.io, and we will download uh, the latest Apertis client. We'll open this. Uh, and then to ins install Apertis, you will basically want to copy everything out of uh, the zip that we just downloaded. We're going to create a new folder. I'm doing this on my desktop just because it's easier for me. Named Apertis. Uh, that could be named anything that you want. Uh, this could really be placed anywhere. Again, this is just uh, to make it easier. Uh, well, so I'm pasting all the contents now into that new folder that I created. And then I'm just going to run Apertis uh, right from here clicking on the add.exe uh, icon. Uh, we, we currently haven't signed the application properly, so you're gonna get a, an error uh, pretty much on any Windows platform saying that it's, this is an unsigned exe. We are working on that. Uh, there is some cost associated with it, so we'll, we're working on uh, getting the funds raised to sign that properly. So 
In the future, this will go away and it'll basically, it'll say uh, signed by Hugpuddle in the future. But for now, you're gonna have to click on Windows 10 anyways, you'll have to click on more info and then select run it anyway. And you'll notice when this runs uh, that Apertis actually created uh, two new folders. It created a couple different things. Uh, but the thing that we, we are most interested in is this folder called root, because this is the folder that uh, we will actually uh, sync up with the BitFossil uh, application. So if we open it up now, we'll see that it just, inclu it just uh, includes some includes uh, uh, files. But since we're here, if you are a CSS uh, master, why not uh, work out a better display for us, uh, for the Apertis uh, client by tweaking our CSS uh, and then uh, sending it to us as a message. We'd, we'd really love uh, someone to kind of work on that for us. Uh, but we'll, we'll go back. All right, so again, we uh, extracted, ran the exe, and it created this root folder. So that's all we need to do with Apertis at this time. We can close it. <clears throat> and now the next step is actually syncing up the uh, uh, Resilio sync along uh, w that is currently connected to uh, BitFossil's uh, index with our local index. So first, so let's go ahead and install uh, Resilio sync. The link to install this uh, will appear uh, in the comment section of this video. Uh, right now, I just have it copied and pasted in it, uh, copied here uh, for this demonstration. So uh, this is what will this is what the screen will look like when you uh, open it. It's going to ask you. Uh, it's going to say that there is a folder called root with 238 megabytes worth of data, uh, and it's going to ask you to install Sync 2.0. And that 238 megabytes of data is actually the current uh, uh, BitFossil root index. So we'll install uh, Sync 2.0 by clicking on this button. It's telling you once it's installed, you're going to have to come back here to actually perform the sync. That's fine. Say OK. Uh, it's downloading a 15 megabyte exe, which I'm going to run. Uh, and then it's asking me uh, what I'd like to do. I'm going to just uh, select the defaults. I, I don't need this to be as a service. I, I want a little bit more control over that. It just prompted me to see if I wanted to make changes to my computer. I said yes. I'm not sure if the video captured that or not. Uh, and now it's going to uh, have me uh, create a name. And it's going to ask me to uh, uh, basically agree to the terms of service. And I'm going to bypass subscribing to the newsletter. OK, so we have uh, currently installed it. So now we're going to, uh, like it said, we're going to go back to that website and refresh. Actually, we don't have to. It's still here. So we're going to just click on Get the Folder. Uh, it's going to uh, actually go out and try to launch Resilio itself. So let's just say OK. Uh, and now it's it's uh, basically uh, suggesting to save it in this default location, but we want to change this, and we actually want to save it, uh, and we want to link it to the the Apertis folder and the root folder that we just created. So we'll select it, uh, and now it'll uh, you see that it's updated the location to this Apertis root, uh, and for your own uh, app for your own uh, application. You know, this URL will be wherever you placed this folder. All right, then we'll say connect. Uh, it's telling me that there's already things in that folder. Uh, do I want to continue anyway? We'll say yes. And uh, that's it. Now you just basically uh, wait uh, for the file for the for the data to come down. Uh, it's going to go through an indexing process first of your local content, which there's really nothing in there. Uh, and then it will start downloading the 230 megs. Uh, and then anytime uh, uh, this is running, you will uh, be receiving any of the BitFossil content uh, that is received as it's received uh, within seconds uh, after we find it. Uh, it, will, it will be down into your local cache so you can browse through it as well. Uh, if you do, uh, you know, if, if, if you're using this process and you do find content that you think is questionable, please report it to us immediately so we can uh, remove it out of the main root 
index uh, and kind of uh, keep everyone happy. All right, uh, so it should be receiving now. So I can kind of, even though it isn't complete, I can show you what's happening uh, by opening up a Pertis. Let's go into the root folder and see what's going on in here. Uh, you'll notice now that there's all of these, uh, all these transaction ID folders are being created. These are the actual uh, transactions that we have found that could that have data that is in the same format as uh, of what a Pertis is expecting. Uh, however, some uh, actual just general uh, money transactions uh, can be uh, in the format a Pertis is expecting. So you will receive some noise transactions, which are really uh, just uh, usually they're just single uh, money transfers that just randomly happen to uh, be in uh, in the format a Pertis is, is, is expecting. Uh, when we originally designed a Pertis, that was actually a, a feature that we we intended to, to, to it to be that way because we we wanted it to be difficult to. Uh, Remove a Pertis I/O content using an algorithm, so we we thought it would we thought that uh, having the uh, format be be open enough to actually receive uh, noise from real transactions and and consider them to be authentic, we thought that that might help uh, reduce uh, the coder's ability to actually filter out all of a Pertis I/O data in the future if that's something that they uh, thought that they needed to do. But as uh, we've been using it, uh, we, we are really noticing that just the value, uh, the, the valuation of the blockchain itself is the biggest determining factor of preventing bloat. Uh, for instance, uh, Bitcoin now is so, the cost is, is so much that uh, it's, uh, it's not really a viable platform to put large amounts of data. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to put a two meg image, you're, you're probably looking at you know, close to $5,000 on Bitcoin. However, on, on the hundreds and potentially thousands of other altcoins, that's not the same uh, situation. Uh, for most of those coins, you can put two megs of data on there for cents, uh, since the valuation of that, those blockchains are much, much lower. All right, uh, so you can see that it's uh, populating the root. And now let's open up a Pertis and uh, show you that now that we, are, we have data populating into our root, uh, we can actually start to uh, search through our local cache as well. Let's see if we have, can find anything uh, yet. Let's see if, uh, let's see, uh, see, see if any of my stuff showed up yet. Oh yeah, cool. So you can see that uh, some of, that uh, I'm already able to return uh, real time uh, searches through the the data that has. Uh, replicated down to my local cache. Uh, and these results will just kind of keep on growing uh, as that completes. So that is uh, the demonstration I promised on hooking up, uh, up your local Apertis client to a real-time uh, index created by bitfossil.com using uh, Resilio Sync. Thanks very much for your time and have a great day.